Today's video will be on pressure testing with dry nitrogen. Since this vehicle came in as a good candidate to go over explaining the one process, one of the features on the field piece, which is called a tightness test. So on this one here, this particular vehicle came in with zero PSI. Right now I have it with my three quarter inch silicone hose down to my 12 CFM vacuum pump that could pump down to three microns. I'm at 421 microns right now. Uh, when I turn it off, it raises up to about 700 microns. So this customer has no history and we were given no information, but it had zero PSI. When I hooked into it, since my manifold gauges were under vacuum, this went down to negative three uh, vacuum because it's the vacuum that was in my hoses when hooking up. So I'm hooked up to the nitrogen tank already. I'm assured there's no refrigerant in the system because I have it under vacuum. So I won't have a test that rises or lowers due to temperature because there'll only be dry nitrogen. I have it preset to roughly 150 PSI. I'm gonna turn on the gas valve. Uh, actually, I already have it turned off. I'm gonna turn off the gas valve here, turn off the vacuum. So here's the vacuum going off. I kill vacuum to it. And here is the pressure going on. Okay, so there we go. Now normally when I'm on bigger commercial systems or something like that, I'll just leave it on, walk away, have a coffee, do some paperwork, do something else for about 15 minutes and allow it to stabilize. But this is a small system and I got a lot more cars to do so I'm going to cut this short right here. I'm in the live shop so you have to put up with the background noise. Okay, so you see 152 PSI on both sides. Now I hit the button called tightness test. Okay, so now we're in the tightness test. It says press enter to start. You see that there's a like a timer right here, minutes and seconds. Hit enter. Now this is where you would normally walk away and do another job, your paperwork, whatever you have to do, and go about 15 minutes. If you just perform a evaporator on a car that like this would take seven hours or maybe a Mercedes or a BMW or something that took anywhere from 12 to 20 plus hours to replace the evaporator, you would perform this test before putting refrigerant in the system. And this literally counts and measures down to one tenth of one PSI something you would never ever see on your gauges if it, even if it moved three tenths of a psi or five tenths of a psi you could not humanly see that move on a normal analog gauge this will measure that and as you see the seconds are counting down and nothing's really happening uh, as a big leak um, we're flickering we're hovering around there and as you see that's one minute and only one registers is flickering it was at the borderline between two tenths and one tenth of a psi so in this scenario you go away have your coffee do whatever you want to do come back in 15 minutes if it's still within one or two tenths of a psi then you know you have something you're not going to find a leak under vacuum and this is a good case scenario you could have a large leak and you can pass this test. You could leave it on here for three hours and it only goes two tenths, something you couldn't humanly find. And as soon as you put a certain amount of pressure in there, all of a sudden you hear a screaming leak that's just blaring open and whistling. But yet you passed a vacuum test. Remember, atmospheric pressure and vacuum, it's only 14.7 roughly PSI difference. So you have very little pressure difference and you're sucking inwards. Say if this was your hose, say you had an O-ring right here, sitting right here, and this was inwards and this was out to atmosphere. 
you can actually suck an o-ring and deform an o-ring inwards against the metal and you can make a seal up against the surface and it'll hold a beautiful vacuum but from inwards when you put a pressure and it hits that o-ring the o-ring can tuck outwards just a little bit enough to pass gas by one of the areas of the o-ring and what even makes it a better sealant is everything has a slight film of oil on it and oil by itself makes an excellent sealant under vacuum so if you have a piece of rubber to rubber rubber to metal or even a metal crack in a condenser or evaporator and you have a crack and you have a surface and you have a film of oil in here just the film of oil itself can hold perfect pressure under a vacuum and remember vacuum is actually a pressure we think of vacuum as vacuum but zero absolute everything is pressure after that so going into a negative in accordance to our atmospheric pressure the oil film can literally stop a leak under vacuum so we're basically nothing could be measured after three minutes so now we're going to go back into a procedure where I'm gonna pump some gas into this um, you know I'm gonna go into a vacuum and then go under vacuum or pressure test with refrigerant and use a electronic refrigerant leak detector and I use the H10 which is one of the best ones on the market and it's a heated diode sensor and I like to use manual mode I don't use automatic mode automatic mode like everything with the spells and missiles if you don't know what you're doing can chase you down a rabbit hole or you can totally pass it up because there could be people using brake clean and other refrigerants and aerosols in your and you zero out in automatic mode to the ambient gas and you go looking for a leak and the concentration of your leak is less than your ambient because everybody loves brake clean in that particular shop you'll never find your leak and this is where you have to break out manual mode and use your brain because it likes to drift and you have to know your tool and how to compensate so that's it for now that's explaining the tightness test on the field piece excellent piece of equipment to have if you're doing evaporators and you've ever one time had that leak from a used evaporator or an o-ring or a seal or somebody cross-threaded and didn't tight down and you spent seven to twenty plus hours totally putting the dash together just to have it leak because you did not perform this test this paid for itself the first time that's it for now Let's see if i find something later on this and there'll be a part two to this nitrogen you can get it everywhere, cheap and easy, cheap and easy, nothing's rocket science. One of the best vacuum pumps on the market. Three quarter inch silicone hose. Um, regular Robin Air, are these are yellow jacket hoses. Uh, I'll get into hoses later and not using them for performing vacuum tests later on. And I'll, I've mentioned it a few times before but you should not be using regular hoses for vacuum tests. Shouldn't even be using manifolds on top of, on top of that. But that'll be another video for another day.